Hi, my name is David Michael Perkins. I'd like to talk real quick about the uh, homeless situation. I've lived here over 44 years, and uh, I'm seeing more and more people living out of their cars and no, uh, no way or people to run to or talk to to get them out of the situation they're in right now. And uh, I, I just see it more and more to where people are giving up. And if you just look around Anaheim, you can see at the parks and uh, um, parking lots and that, you see cars, you see RVs, you see people just living their lives out of trunks and that. And it, there's got to be a better way to uh, um, react to our homeless situation. And I'm hoping people uh, in this county uh, can understand that uh, they are people that we should respect instead of put labels on and uh, turn our backs on and walk away from them. And the other thing I'd like to talk about real quick is my nephew Justin Perkins uh, was beaten to death on October 27, 2018 by two Anaheim police officers. I just uh, standing here tonight uh, wishing now he was here with me, but he's not able to talk for himself. He was mentally challenged, and they labeled him as a drug, drug addict on some kind of hallucinating drug. And they were, before letting him talk or say anything, pulled him out of our home, beat him with fists, and then metal batons, and then finally a chokehold, and resulted in the death of him. And I wish there would be retraining of the officers, all officers, to where they know the difference between a mentally challenged person and a person on drugs. And this was on hearsay of the victim who was viciously punched out here. I'm not even sure. They sealed everything, and I have not been able to find out too much. And I was an eyewitness to everything. And I just hope that people have an understanding that mentally challenged people have a life too, and they don't need to be labeled immediately as a drug addict. You can take a second or a minute instead of just grabbing, bullying, beating, and killing. You could react, you can look, react, and then act on what you see. And I hope that they get retrained that a uh, difference is shown between a person on drugs and mentally challenged people, men or women, children. Thank you, sir. Thank you all. Hello, thank you. My name is R. Joshua Collins, founder of Homeless Advocates for Christ on Facebook. And uh, first, I want to, of course, encourage everyone to get the life to Jesus Christ. Uh, the most important thing is for each of us to, to learn to trust in and depend on the Lord. Um, we've all sinned. We all need a Savior uh, from the wrath to come. And it really is a joy to serve the Lord. Um, but I want to also talk about the homeless issue. This is a question I, uh, I found on, online. It's kind of a good question. What's the difference between a prisoner of war and a homeless person? And the answer here they said is, under the Geneva Convention, a prisoner of war is entitled to food, shelter, and medical care. And that's, that's pretty powerful when you meditate on that and you look at the situation with our homeless people. Um, and there are, are some homeless individuals I've been talking to that really want to get into this shelter, but they're not able to. They call CityNet, and for whatever reason, there's a clog in the, in the process, whatever it is. So uh, I would just encourage the council not to enforce these no camping, no uh, uh, storage of property ordinances until we can get the flow going, where homeless can actually get in there that want to get in there. And um, we need more housing, of course, more permanent supportive housing, ultimately, or else uh, many more will continue to join the ranks of the homeless. Um, and if the city can't immediately respond to homeless people that want to get into housing uh, you know, with this shelter, why not create another option for them, whether another campground or somewhere they can go or park their car and live in their vehicle, whatever they need to do, but they need another option because if the, the shelter's not ready, people can't get in the shelter, 
you know, there's out there, you know, there's homeless women out there with medical conditions and, and you know, they're, they're liable to maybe be assaulted, all that kind of stuff, and they have nowhere to go. And they're just out there in the street. And I just talked to some today, that two, uh, a couple that wanted to get in the shelter bad, and they, they can't get in there. So uh, please call me if you can make something happen and get someone in the shelter, because I know people right now that want to get into the shelter and they can't. So um, also, uh, I also like to talk also about uh, the individual, uh, my, my friend uh, Michael uh, that just spoke uh, regarding uh, his nephew, that it would be great if you get the body cam footage for the family and others to see because uh, it would help to kind of later to rest some of the questions that they have regarding, regarding what happened and all of that. So I uh, just want to encourage the council to do that so that uh, there won't be any secrets because sometimes when you hold secrets it makes people think that you're guilty. But if the NIMPD isn't guilty of anything, then they shouldn't have anything to hide, right? So, um, anyways, uh, please do contact me if you can also help the homeless and get them in shelters, and thanks for your time. Share the video, and if you can, do join Homeless Advocates for Christ on Facebook. As you share the video and educate people on what's happening here in Anaheim, it's really helpful to get other people involved. You know, that's what we want, just to bring change, positive changes, and get more help for people that need. So, thanks for your prayers and support. Um, really need it. So. Uh, hope to hear from you soon. Please like, subscribe, share. May God bless you as you seek for the kingdom always. Bye-bye.